if I actually do the same thing with other people, link their story to their business product and service, then I can help them to use their story as the marketing strategy and help them to have a business of, of their own. The whole concept for Move is M, make a difference. Oh, to offer up your time, talent, and gifts. And B, there's victory in the small things, and E, to encourage others. And so I started to move. Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining the Move podcast. All of my new podcast friends out there, today I have a very special guest with an incredible story of overcoming adversity and using that to propel her business. So without further ado, how are you doing, Vivian So? Hey, I'm doing good. Nice to be on your podcast. So, so Vivian, what is it exactly that you do? Um, I help people to transform their story into a business because when a business is correct, uh, connected to the business why through the product and service, it become a very unique selling proposition and a best branding strategy is to tell the story. And I know lots of people are ashamed of the story or don't think they have much to offer, but I'm here to not to change them, but to embrace the person they already are and be proud of their story and able to tell their story proudly and also make a living by telling the story. So I use digital marketing as a transformation tool for people um, to be able to feel better about themselves and also maybe able to um, break through the limiting belief. Well, I think that's very important and it's definitely much needed, especially in today's society. But you didn't get there just by snapping your fingers and then poof, you're there. So obviously you had to overcome some adversities of your own. What, so give me a little background about what it was like growing up being Vivian. Um, growing up was very difficult. Um, when I was in third grade, my parents are uh, too busy and they were arguing and my, and my uh, schoolmate are uh, not uh, playing with me. And so from third grade to sixth grade, I literally have no friends and then uh, when I was in fifth grade, my grandma and my grandpa passed away. So being no uh, parents' guidance, no friends, and my, you know, the parental figure, my grandma and my grandpa passed away, I have to learn to deal with my own emotion. But that was like a little bit episode because when I actually got to a teenager, it was even worse because um, my parents, like, always don't believe in me and when i got sick in 2000 the situation go worse because uh they start at every dinner table just yelling at me like every dinner table and it will be left and right right because this is a small table two meters apart each end and i have to sit through that eating and um but fortunately i never give up well what what kind of stuff did they yell at you about um, I'm the chiefer. Um, you, 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 you don't, you, you don't matter. Like something like a useless, uh, idiot. Like some anything they can yell at me. It was just basically they telling me I'm not achieving the standard they want. That I cannot be successful. Uh, when I earn my um, when I earn my uh, multiple license. They say I cannot be a successful multi person because of my age. And pretty much that kind of like, okay, I'm out of there because of that. And I stick with that little limited belief that I cannot amount to anything for a while. Actually, six years. For six years, I'm a college grad, but for six years, I stuck as a cashier job. You stuck and what? I stuck at a cashier job. So even I'm a college grad, I decided to stick with a cashier job for six years. And the only reason I get out of that cashier job is because I have to move from Victoria, BC to Ontario. 
So after that, I try other job, but basically it's still entry level job. I don't dare to claim a bigger dream until I really fall to my rock bottom in 2015. My health go even worse, and I cannot be an employee. And it was just a split second moment that I realized if I want to change my mindset, I just have to take action. So I sent out a LinkedIn introduction to my connection and asked for a job. And the first offer I got that I can work for free to try my first client was in a niche I never heard of before. It's called window treatment. I was like, what is window treatment? But I didn't reject the job. I take the job. I over delivered, got a good testimony, and I land other jobs since then. But it was because I believed in myself and I didn't like, you know, saying that, oh, I never have a digital marketing client before. I never, um, you know, never this, never that. I don't have a marketing degree because my college diploma is on accounting. Uh, I don't have three years uh, digital marketing experience. I cannot really do this. I didn't have that. I was just like, I need this right now. I need money and I'm just going for it. And that's the aha moment. I can just change my mindset in a split second when I take action. And and then like when when COVID hit, I actually um have to shut down my business. And when I start went back up, because I don't want to be employee again, I reposition my business because I think if I can tell my story and you know more people will become digital entrepreneur because that exactly how I become one. I didn't become one because I have an education in marketing. I didn't happen because I have three years as a marketing manager. I start out from zero. Then later I was thinking like, well, you guess what? If I actually do the same thing with other people, link their story to their business product and service, then I can help them to use the story as the marketing strategy and help them to have a business of, of their own. But the idea to actually um, use digital marketing to be a therapeutic or healing kind of tool is rather new. You would say you never heard of it before, right? Yeah, no, I, I was going to ask you to elaborate on that. How, oh, so... Um, I'm just giving an example. Um, my my target audience is actually a woman, but apply for men as well. Uh, so take a sample, someone who is uh, only watch sport in their life, and their wife probably will say she is a loser. He only watch sport, doesn't do anything else. <laughs> but for me, I would be like claiming like, okay, you can be a sport commander online, and you can sell sport event tickets. And you can actually uh, sell print on demand jersey and sport mug or sport, uh, you know, the, the gadget uh, or, or, you know, clove pin and something like that. And um, and that would actually embracing what he's doing. I'm not changing who he is, but embracing who he is. And now he has a good story to tell. So he's not ashamed of who he is. He's become what, what he wanted to become. And you cannot do this without the digital marketing platform. The digital marketing platform is the only platform where you can do anything to make a business out of it as long as you can discover what's your passion, what's your why, what's your vision, and what's your talent. I think that's an important thing. And a lot of times people step outside of themselves to try to do things that they're they don't really like but they do it because they need a paycheck and you're here to basically say hey you don't have to do it that way you can take who you are you can be proud of who you are and then use that to catapult you to whatever position that you want to be in exactly and i know some people are saying not every story can turn to a business well i think you're mistaken there's so many people who need to tell how they overcome such obstacles that can be marriage uh you know, broken marriage, they can teach like how to compact those difficult moments. It doesn't necessarily to resolve the problem. They can still be broken in a divorced life, but they can share 
how they overcome certain things, what kind of legal thing that need to be paired in a divorce or what kind of thing need to be paired when it comes to custody. That is something you can share. It like a lot of people like, oh, but they haven't overcome their difficulty. They cannot tell the story. No. When you combating something, that's something worth to tell. Showing vulnerability you would think is a weakness, but turns out to be a strength because I think that is where when you let down your guard, then you really can connect with somebody on a real level. They can see you for who you are and you'll have their attention. And so I think it's very important, but it's hard to get to that position. You know, there's a, our egos, nobody likes to, to show our, our ugly side of our face. You know, everybody wants to put the makeup on and show, show our pretty side of our face. Um, but unfortunately, that isn't as effective. You know, it's not as effective if you want to truly connect with somebody. If you want to entertain somebody, that's a different story. But if you want to connect, I think what you're doing is very, very, very important. You're taking their story and you're spinning it in a way that they can leverage that to connect to more people. Um, do you have any examples of people that you've used their story and with their business to help market? You know what? I'm actually just uh, starting this program. It's a new program, but I'm my best uh, avatar. I did that myself. Um, but uh, what I'm trying to say is that's the part I want to help them with is to, like, I say I'm an empowerment coach as well, right? So I work with them with their story from not wanting to talk about their story to be proud of their story. So it's not too much about connect with someone else to, I know that's what we do in marketing. We try to make our audience resonate with myself. But I use digital marketing as a tool of transformation, a tool for uh, make it, um, transform someone's life. So the focus is on helping them themselves if they want help to not be ashamed of their story, then I have a way to work with them to get them to able to do that. I try I have a beta workshop where I, you know, have a exercise on um reclaim your personal power. And I also have a four days uh workshop where I talk about how to uh, drill down your why, your passion, your talent, how to extract your knowledge into a message, uh, craft of your problem statement, and, um, and you know, just push content into the digital marketing space and create your own virtual uh, stage. But that, you have to be the person really want to change themselves. Not necessarily have a business, but have to be willing to want to get out of where they are stuck right now and want a transformation that it is gonna be scary because I'm saying not only you want to not shame about it, but be so proud of your story that you will tell other people to help other people to transform their life. Yeah, okay, here, tell Vivian how bad it is. Tell her, it was horrible, tell her. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Well, I guess it is what it is. Um, you know, and I think this is this is a, a situation where, you know, this is a real life situation where you're trying to accomplish something like our video so we can talk and I can get to the, the bottom of it, right? And, and uncover the way that you've moved to overcome your adversity. And so we can, you know, show people and they can say, you know what, I can do that. But in the midst of what we're doing, we have interruptions, we have things that happen that are sidetracked, tracking us, things that need our attention that aren't supposed to happen, but, and here they are. And so you either have a choice, you can either go with the flow and, and try to highlight it and say, hey, look, it's okay for this stuff to happen because this is life. This is being vulnerable, right? And you go with it and then we take the situation and then we, we roll that and make it a better message because now we're incorporating real life into it and not just 
having some fake. I would say like just keep him on the show, just like talk about like uh talk about a little bit about your 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 why and your story as well because we we're talking about story. Yeah, well, this this little kid was a um was a very scary birth. Um, <laughs> he, he, yeah, it was because there was a prolapse, and a prolapse is when you have the the uh, um, what is the 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 uh, what the heck? What's the tube that feeds them the um, you know where they get all of their nutrients and stuff from the. Uh, so, so that basically came, that came out before, before he came out. And what happens is when that, when that comes out and then the head goes into the birthing canal, it cuts off the oxygen. Oh, I saw what you mean now. Okay. Yeah. So it cuts off the oxygen. And what happened was we ended up having a, you know, the doctor came in that was supposed to have, you know, her birth that was her birthing doctor and that doctor couldn't she had another birth so then we were like whoa and then another doctor came in and said okay and <clears throat> checked her said oh she's nine centimeters um she's nine centimeters and we better do something so they broke her water and then the the doctor reached in to check and said Prolapse cord, prolapse cord. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, everything, chaos just hit. And you had nurses running in the room. We had, you know, kicking out the wheels so then we can run down the hall. And I was, you know, I opened the door so everybody can get out through. And we're just running. And then the doctor's still on top of the bed with her hand up up in my wife because she's trying to hold the baby's head from coming in and cutting off the umbilical cord. That's the word. Um, and so, so she's there and then they're running and then all of a sudden they're like, you have to stop. You have to stop. There was a line in the hall and I said, what, what, what? You have to stay here. You can't go past this point. So then I just see them running down the rest of the hall and then turning in the room with the doctor still on top and my wife screaming, ah! <clears throat> and that must be difficult oh that was that was a very very crazy situation and then and then you hear code stroke code stroke and then you see more people running in the OR and I'm just standing there like you know then it really hit me like I could have like I could lose my son and my wife and then there was a code blue, code blue, or it was code pink. And then, you know, again, people running in there. And so it was, and then literally I'm out in the hall for probably 45 minutes, just like, and then I just hit my knees like, God, please save my son, save my wife. You know, I, I don't know what to do right now. And, and so finally somebody came back and said, um, everything was fine. Your wife's sleeping and your son's okay. Uh, however, he's gonna have to go into the NICU. We may be transferring him to another hospital because the umbilical cord was prolapsed and it was cut off for a little bit, but we just don't know how much. So then it's like, then they're thinking, well, we may have to transport him to the other hospital so we can connect him to a machine that pumps his blood out, cools it down, pumps it back in so it will slow down brain function. And if it slows down brain fun function, then there'll be less of a chance that there'll be mental handicaps. So, so that was very crazy. And he was in, hey Carson, Carson, come here. So he was in the, hot, in the NICU for over, yeah. for like four months, no four months, uh, four days. And, um, and so, but everything's fine, and the kid's really smart. Yeah. So he's a hard-headed little little bugger, but he's he's cute, he's smart, and um, definitely a blessing. Yeah. Daddy. So so in something like this, you could take that story, for example, or or would it 
probably be more of a personal story, right? This is a story of something that I experienced, but you would probably have some kind of a personal story. Like, let's say maybe I was bullied in high school or something like that. And if I was bullied in high school, you would take that and help me accept that story and then spin it to be part of my business or or how would you what what are you what would you do there so well take your case first you can possibly tell your story to talk about how unexpected life is and whatever your business is you can actually apply that and then i would say like if let's just say you are an insurance person and that will be perfect because you never what was the just gonna come next. So when you get married, you always have insurance, and then you can talk about your story, how unpredictable as a new father, and it's like people can sense the the life and death moment that you have, your sincerity, and they feel like, yeah, I cannot predict my future, so they will be ready to to you know get an insurance uh contract with you guys. But let's say you're just trying to share with other dad, then you can actually have a class that teach how the dad can prepare uh, for the for the birth, like how to support the woman when she's in labor and what to do if something screw up. What is the protocol that you can take to calm yourself down and actually able to help your wife and help your child? And if you're yeah. or like, um, you can even spin on that. You uh, If you're evangelist, you can use this story to talk about like, um, that you know, it, it is all God saving at the end. And you tell the same story, but yeah. it's for a different vocation, right? If you're insurance, you tell it to talk about highlight how life is the lack of uncertainty. You better protect your home right now. If you are trying to share with other dad, you're helping them to be ready for labor to expect anything can happen and how to smooth them to help their wife better during the labor. And if you are evangelist, then you just use the chance how God can transform it. It depends on what you want to do. And that's why the story is the same, very same story, but depends on what you want to do. What is your message? Do you, when you come up, it, does you feel like you want to help other dad? Or do you feel like you want to help other people to prepare the insurance, which is the same line you try to help to protect your family? And so all those things are good, but that's why you, I say when I go to the workshop, not only your vision, your story, but your talent and your passion. Because your story is part of it, but you also need to know what you want to do in life, how you want to impact people. Like I have my story. I want to transform people's life, but the vehicle I do is through digital marketing. How do you want your story to transform people? Yeah. What is the vehicle of transforming other people? That will determine your path. Yeah. And for the bully, they can talk about, you know, um, helping other people to um, be strong and, um, you know, they can become a, a counselor to talk about like how to prevent a bully from happening again or how to help the bully to uh, get some counseling or how to help them to become have a better self-esteem and have a price intervention plan. It's almost social work, right? But not everybody actually want to be a social worker just because they got a bully. So the same bully story, they can talk about how you can um, strengthen your self food obstacle. It can be, uh, you can be a CEO trying to empower someone. So there's a bully situation I have but I didn't actually give up. Even I got bullied, I actually go on and become uh, even more studious in my studies so that now I'm a CEO. The same thing can happen to you. Don't let your situation to undermine you. Even now you're a front-end employee, someday you will amount to something if you do not give up and do not let that situation affect you or other people affect you. You see how I did that? It was bully, but as a CEO, I've encouraged the front end employee as as little as they are as a front end worker. And you can and I can link more as like and as a front end employee, I really appreciate each of you because without you, we wouldn't understand our customer 
uh, and everything that operational, whether it's working at its best performance. So I highly suggest you to uh, take the opportunity to meet with your manager to talk about your annual goal. It seems though <clears throat> that putting, you don't want to put the cart before the horse and it seems like you, instead of taking an existing business and modeling a story to improve the marketing, what you're doing is taking a um, meaningful story in somebody's life and then yeah. using ow, ow. that story as a beacon of light to guide them to what they want to do in life. So it's it's not taking the business they exist that is that they're currently having most likely maybe it could be used for that but the most important thing is to take the story and use that to guide them on what they're going to accomplish and then once they decide that you will help them employ digital tools to make that message heard louder and farther yeah because when you know how you want to use your story to help you on the right path the next step is connect that business with your product and service so that it become a very good unique selling proposition for yourself and a marketing strategy and that's how you stand out from the crowd and that's how it come from not wanting to tell your story to you really want to tell your story because your story is going to impact people's life with your product and service however you want to um, decide to, to do that. I like it. I, I think that there is a level of humility in getting people to do that. They, they have to experience the humility in order to open their eyes and sit with shortcomings things that have happened in their life where they didn't accomplish what they were trying to accomplish or they didn't hit the mark and instead of pretending it didn't happen they're looking at that they're accepting that and then that is what's making them powerful and and i think a lot of people will be forced to go on a self discovery journey and i would assume that in your four-day workshop that's what you do you take them through a self-discovery journey is that right um part of it it is part of it is very uh, into digital marketing because uh, i do try to help them to understand what digital marketing is, is to in order for that but i'm expanding my uh, my events because i i just done a better version of it and i thought after I think about it, I should focus more on that's about digital marketing. Because um, originally the beta event that I run, um, the focus was on um, how to narrow down your niche and all that. But I think in order for them to take that step, the first step is to for them to accept them who they are and embrace who they are, which is the part that was harder than to me, just teach them all the digital marketing too. It wouldn't mean anything for them if they haven't, you know, narrowed down how they want to use the story. That makes sense. Um, and then when you're talking about digital marketing specifically, what are you talking about? So essentially what happened in the four days workshop, it would be like, um talk about their why the vision the passion and then from that i'll say what kind of uh people resonate with you that you can bring them over the bridge the epiphany story and uh, as for me i'm a relative new speaker but in 2021 i secure x spot out of the 12 spot that originally i'm aiming to have on other people's stage and that's why my friends say you know what, hitting 12 stage is too easy for you. Make it easier. And so it's not really that hard to get on other people say like, right now I'm on your podcast, it's kind of a stage, right? But mm -hmm. lots of people don't know how easy it is when 
you start networking, start socializing, start going to event. And I think one of the event I go to, I actually got 12. Yeah. And I wasn't a speaker, I was just a participant. Mm -hmm. But I played full out during the events and that's how I got the 12 lead as a participant. <laughs> and so I was, I was trying like, okay, you have your story now and you want to share your story. So at least at the bare minimum, when you have your own program, I want you to use public speaking, having your own Facebook Live or go on other people's stage to to bring the eyeball to your message so that you can easily sell your program or your workshop. So that's the complete solution from, you know, you're not confident, you don't think you can achieve anything, you're ashamed of your story, or you don't ever think you can be something that was excellent to then you, something change inside, you feel like your story have something matter and figure out what you want to do with your story that's going to be helped you down the path and figure out what you want to do with it. And then tell the story in a way that is going to be empowering to other at the same time, build a little program or workshop around what you know already out of that situation. And then how I take that into content marketing, which is social media, and then have their own uh, Facebook Live, multiple streaming, and go on other people's stages, other people's podcasts, other people's submit to spread that. So it's like, I feel like, you know, if I just teach you digital marketing, it won't make sense to them because it seems like that's not what they sign up for. But essentially, the digital marketing is the exact platform they need. I always believe like everybody can get a slice of digital marketing, make it their own, and get profit from it. And I'm just not getting profit from it, but trying from people like that would be the next step to do it. Got it. Very noble. Now, when it comes to TikTok, are there, what's the, is there, is there any new digital marketing uh, platforms that you're using more than others? So I know Facebook Live, obviously, um, but like Snapchat or TikTok or, focus on uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, and uh, YouTube, but yeah. um, Clubhouse is a new one. Uh, that Clubhouse. Probably, yeah, Clubhouse. I'm new to Clubhouse as well, but then, you know, at least I know, like, the first day I was on Clubhouse, I go on to Worship War Room, and I lead two songs. So out there, I already kind of position myself. I, um, I'm a, I, I, I was a worship leader. So I kind of like feel that connection right there when I'm in the room and I'm an evangelist. That was the first thing I do that, 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 and people will follow me. I don't have my follow up right now, but then people start to follow me because they was thinking like, oh yeah, that person can sing. Maybe I want to check her stuff out. And so as a brand myself as a Christian on Clubhouse, even my bio, I'm saying, hey, I help people to transform the story into, um, into business. But I brand myself very clearly, I'm a Christian person and that's where I stand. Because sometimes on social media, you don't necessarily want to, um, how to say, you want to be authentic. You don't want to be too business-like. You don't be like, oh, I'm a digital marketer and da 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 And when they know I'm a Christian, that know a bit about my character, my authenticity. And that's how I introduced them to check my profile and the profile talk about my business. So were you, did you grow up as a Christian or did something, or did you, or have you always been a Christian? Um, I was raised in a Catholic school, uh, but I have been, and I have some kind of like a Catholic baptism before that I didn't know it doesn't really can you have to have a immersion, uh, what the immersion baptism. So in 2004, I actually did that. Um, but back in my story where I say I was no friends, my grandparents passed away and my parents are busy or arguing. I actually asked God for wisdom. And that's how I got the wisdom from God to manage my emotion when I was, um, you know, my parents yelling at me at the dining table. I don't have anyone around me. I would just by myself. And But 
because I don't have friends that much all, when I grow up. But my God protect my mind, soul, and spirit. So I didn't leave school. I didn't run away from home. I didn't actually, um, at, at least for a little while, I didn't actually move out. And I and then um, I didn't actually uh, go into drugs, alcohol. I wasn't become angry. I didn't have a temper problem. I didn't blame people. I didn't have the victim mentality. And people was like, how did you do that? Like, who actually do it? I mean, I cannot answer anything, but other than saying, God just protect my mind there. Everything that was negative that people may learn from the parenting, the how, how people were being parent. Like, you saw people say, if you got a really negative environment that people grow up with, with grumpy, right? But I'm not grumpy at all. <laughs> so I cannot attribute anything I was doing attribute to God who just shout in my mind and keep me really positive. Because even when I was growing up, people see me only as a, a cheerleader, you know, happy, bring joy to people. They don't see me as someone self-pity, um, angry, or victim mentality. They didn't see that. And for the longest time, even before they were doing all the yelling, when they were shutting down my idea, I uh from i was trying to write i wrote 200 poems and they shut me down and saying oh your english is your second language i'm not gonna read your poem your poem get published it was just by accident or whatever and then i turned to other subject where i always tried to like i didn't give up i was just keep trying to learn other hobby or skill to please my parents which is something i later learned that i don't have to but that process instead of like shut me down from uh, wanting to do anything. It was God who protect me and keep helping me to have this never admitting your loser kind of attitude, never give up attitude, keep trying different things. And eventually I learned a lot of things and I accomplished a whole bunch of things. The writing 200 poems is the accomplishment itself. Definitely. But I wouldn't have got it that far if my parents have not been negative and if my God has not protected me and provided me the wisdom that I should not stop when people pull cold water at your feet. You should just keep going, find something somewhere, someday you'll be known for something that everybody will honor you, will respect you. And, and I cannot really come up with that idea because there's no other like my grandparents is gone, I'm in a new country, you know, friends and all that stuff. So I can only attribute God is the one who provided me the wisdom. And that was the original wisdom I asked when I was in third grade. You know, it reminds me, somebody had told me that they were abused when they were growing up and their dad would beat them up, you know, spank them and beat them up pretty good. And one of the brothers ended up joining the military <clears throat> and excelled, did a bunch of hand-to-hand -hand combat and was basically one of the top people in his group. And he's like, I had no choice. I mean, I, I already started this. You know, my dad beat us up when we were kids and toughened us up. And so, so I'm like, that's interesting because yes, you can say two things. You can say either it was abuse, okay? Or you can say it was training. And the choice is yours. It was the same action that took place. But in the first instance, there's a lot of negativity and victimization that's associated with that. And then the second saying that it's training literally takes a bad thing and spins a positive layer on top of it. And that allows us to, it, it liberates us. It liberates us from the shackles of victimization. And that's what I'm trying to do here with the Move podcast is talk to people that have overcome adversities and pull out that essence of the fact it's their choice mm -hmm. and their choice dictates their path and their path can go up the mountain 
so then eventually they can see all of the beautiful scenery or it can take them into a gully and all they can see is dirt. Yeah, I mean, on the same token, I can blame God for everything, but I actually thank God for everything. It's like how you, the angle you see. That's why I was thinking like God may have taken some of my blessing when it before I got sick with my uh, mental illness. I was actually have a perfect photographic memory. I'm good at math, but afterward, I, I'm no longer doing that. But he gave me wisdom and perceptive understanding. It was the perceptive that brought me here. It was that perceptive. Because it was like how you perceive things make a lot of difference to how you approach your problem. Well, now, when you say mental illness, what do you mean by that? Um, I have three different kind of diagnoses. I got schizophrenic, I got bipolar, and I got anxiety disorder. And so for someone with an anxiety disorder, I... Being a cashier for six years is actually amazing. Because <laughs> I think I remember... Dealing with a bunch of people, I can only imagine. And the, and the only thing that was... The, the, the worst moment is anxiety disorder was that I was afraid to split a pill. It overwhelmed me the idea to split a medical pill. I would avoid doing it. And, and everybody uh, my, in my family say I'm lazy. But no, I actually can't do it because I have that disorder. And I don't know how I came out of the nutshell, but I actually able to um, handle uh, customer service. That's why part of it, I was in a nutshell, I only I can only become a cashier because I thought I was already really good at my, uh, at my best when I'm an anxiety disorder person to actually able to handle customer service. So I thought I was already at my best. But little did I know as a college grad I should be actually can go further and it's and I actually don't think whether you're college grad or high school grad it doesn't really matter because everybody has something to offer but at that point I was like oh I can only be a cashier because I already think I'm at my best so whatever whatever the level of success you can conceptualize you're able to doing that's the level you were able to achieve because as long as you don't think you can achieve more you will get stuck you won't be motivated to reach out for more and you'll be content as where you are. So now let me ask you where you're at now. Do you, are you still taking medication? Is it still part of your day-to-day -day routine or are, have you been completely liberated from that? Oh, or... um, those three illnesses is a lifetime thing. And I also got reading problem too because after I got sick, I got reading uh, disability. But before I got sick, I actually was a quiet reader. So lots of people, if they was like, why would you use tell me that you wouldn't trade anything to get back those uh, reading ability, the memory ability, the math ability, you won't trade anything with God other than what he gave you because God gave you perceptive understanding and wisdom. Because perceptive understanding and wisdom worth more than those skills. It bring me long like winning on a long haul because I'm able to understand people, understand situation better and so that I can make the right choice, a wiser choice. So that's why I say I won't trade anything. Like those things, if God took away my, my knowledge of math, my perfect memory and my uh, reading ability, I wouldn't trade anything. I won't want that back it, because I got something else. I got perceptive understanding I got wisdom, and I actually got wisdom uh, in terms of um, scripture as well. So I was like, I don't want to trade anything. I wouldn't change a thing at all. Wow. That's and that would be like, you have to really appreciate how God is working in your life. It's like, why wouldn't you? At least I wouldn't. I, like somebody would be like, at least I would trade the part where you're getting um, yelled at every dinner table. Or maybe I would trade the fact that you don't have any friends when you're younger. But if any of this thing change, I don't have the task to not giving up. Remember I tell you, I never give up every time my parents shut me down on an idea. I wouldn't have that training. I wouldn't become who I am. Now, do you think that how your parents treated you had an effect in your diagnoses of schizophrenia? No, it was totally something else. Uh, oh, yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't uh, my, my parents. Because that was happened after I got sick. Got it. 
got it. And 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 I was like, um, I was like, uh, I I would think that like, whatever that cost me sick, I was already like, uh, how to say, it? forgiving that 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 episode that was causing me sick. But I was actually think I'm blessed by it because whatever that is, God used the. God used the negative things in my life to bless me with more things in in like down the road, because now I have a story I can share. I have lots of wisdom that I can share with other people in terms of dealing with negativity, dealing with verbal abuse, dealing with um, mental health issues, and um, dealing with um, dealing with anxiety. Well, I think that is so important especially for today. What you do is very important. This conversation regarding those diagnoses and, you know, there's so many people out there that are struggling with anxiety. I mean, anxiety is everywhere, especially with all this COVID dynamic stuff that's happening. And then also, you know, people are are being shut out, not being able to connect with others and they're suffering from anxiety. But then you also have pharmaceutical companies that are in every aspect of business. And it's, it's like they create situations so they can have a solution. <laughs> they create uh, an illness so they can have um, a cure. And, and I think that a lot of people are taking medication and some people definitely need it. And some people don't as much, but, but then it comes back down to our personal thoughts. Are we going to accept that we are going to be taking this for the rest of our life and that's just the way it is? because we're afraid to venture out or is it possible if we have the correct outlook and we decide that our will is stronger than anything else on this planet, can we will ourselves off of medication or just maybe reducing medication and is that something that's going to create more harm than good i don't know the answer to that but i've i was talking to my sister last night because she's taking medication she was diagnosed as schizophrenic and high anxiety uh, and severe depression and so and she's taking different medications and you know i i just i was just trying to give her some advice I feel like, you know, there there's a lot of people that are sharing those um, issues right now, and so that's why it's it's very interesting that we're having this conversation. So I guess your, my opinion on is that. one thing: some people can never change the medication because if you change one slightly thing, it will get sick. Yeah. I got sick in 2015, and I no longer be employee because. My uh, one of my psychiatrists changed my recipe in medication, and I just go nuts. And and then I'm I'm happy that I regained the uh, uh, how to say uh, sober kind of in the sense that I don't have hallucination anymore, and my bipolar and anxiety disorder is stable. But so so some people changing med is very very um, dangerous thing to do. But also, it's not you don't just rely on the medication, right? You have like everything that I do is not because I take the medication. It was my perception, perceptive, my approach to problems, my thanksgiving to God that I can see how God is working in my life, bless me through the difficulty that He has given me, that bring me the positive outlook bring me the desire to share gospel or, or try to use digital marketing to transform people. It all comes from your perspective, your approach, how you respond to your circumstances. That's how you shape things. 
because medication is just a really small part of recovery. If I only rely on my med, but my my take on life was victim mentality. Um, you know, limit myself that I like, label myself with the with, with the illness that I can never overcome my general anxiety disorder. I can never be a cashier. But like, if you do that, then you're just limiting yourself. You set yourself up just by the way you present things. And now you can see why I would not trade anything from God that she, he blessed me with, with the perspective, understanding, and wisdom, because that is what is needed to counter adversity. And that's how children shall be trained to have to have a different perspective when it comes to difficulty. Because there's always two sides of the corner. Yay. Right. So so you're still so are you are you gonna be taking medication for the rest of your life or is it just something yeah. that you're gonna have flare ups and have to deal with or or how does that work? Um, I think right now I'm only taking two medications, so I kind of reduce a bit, but I think I have to take for life for that medication to keep me stable. Got which it. Which is not necessarily a bad thing because the side effect was so minimum and you know, I I uh I'm really have to thank God that um uh, my uh, my psychiatrist, other than that little episode when he tried to change my medication to screw me up, majority of them, my psychiatrist is really good at assessing what I need. And so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, well, I'm just trying to think. Um, I'm a little distracted here, but the um, I think... The biggest thing, I think we got some really good messaging out of this podcast today. I think that you are doing some really good things. I can't wait to see it evolve. And I appreciate you coming on the show. I think you got an amazing story. Now, if somebody wants to reach out to you to get help with their story, where do they find you? Oh, um, I'm going to give you our Calendly link that they can book a 30-minute free consultation with me. Okay. And you just put it in the show notes and they can book it, you know, whenever they want. And then we can talk about um, anything they want. I can about the struggle, the story. Because remember, I'm a digital marketing person, but I'm also an empowerment coach. So the 30 minute, they can ask me anything they want. Got it. And I do believe that you have perspective. Uh, I think when it comes to dealing with negativity, I don't think anybody can refute your credentials. I think you definitely will be able to help people deal with their negativity and basically spin it into something that is going to give them success. So Vivian, again, thank you so much for coming on the Move podcast. And until next time, I'll see you later. Okay, see ya.